All right, good morning. Once again, I'm very late. It's just before 9 o'clock here. Just got sucked into some other stuff, but it's nothing really going on. I mean, we're starting to see a little bit of a grind up here in pre-market. Um, let's see what that price action is doing right now. Yeah, just a little grind up. There's 8 o'clock. Reset. So we moved up hard. Shut up. Jesus Christ. Uh, the eight thirty. That's eight thirty, right? Yeah. So grinding up off the jobless claims news, it looks like hit a top and now we're fading. I shouldn't say grinding. We moved up and now we see a fade. Oh, that's great. Trading a pot dealer for a global terrorist. That's good. That's great. Anyway. Uh, anything to go on here? Not really. They're not going to move anything today. Right? Yeah, because this is... We could see a new one potentially starting here. So there's the new one. Yeah, I said this yesterday. There's probably at least a few more in here. Don't worry. It's not like this thing's just going to drop it drop through here and it's just straight back down to a lows. There's probably a few more in here. We're still go on the no-go, so that's good. Still have a bullish move going on. Now, I'll say this. Every time we've hit the green... We've had, you know, we sell off, we come back up, and then we flush. Same thing you can see here. You can even say it was here or here, whatever. But there's, you know, just the failure to recapture the high, and then there's the reversal. So you get the lower high set in, and then we get an aggressive move from there. But that's the what we're looking for. That's why I'm kind of staying very apprehensive, and that's what they want you to do. I mean, obviously... The whole idea is to make you think something's going to happen just like it happened before. And when it doesn't, um, you don't believe it. And then you're cha you're stuck chasing while they're, you know, sitting there laughing at you. Getting the better end of the deal. Uh, let's see. Where are the cues are at? Let's move through this quickly. Cues. Drop down below, hit the anchored view app, failed to get above, but looks like they also, this has another, yeah, it's at the same angle there. Same situation. Diamonds, a little bit weaker. Does not have the same feel though, but here's this one. Right? This will snap right in there. If I can get it. So there's that one. Anything. Let's do XBI. That was looking fairly strong. Yeah, and got snapped back. Still holding above this, which is good. XLV. Just a little pullback. They, the healthcare did well pretty much for the last few days. All right, that's good. Anything in bio boom that's worth it? Not really. Just stuff chopping around, making coming back up. Why? Why? What did I? What did you do? What did you do? Come on. All right, so this is the technical move here. So there's this sucker right here. Alright, so I'm going to wait again. 
What do we got? Oh, did I miss a good one? I did. Wow. Higher, low. So we're going to get the bullish divergence going here. Okay. So there's the first break add. Will you wait? Because you know there's at least probably three, four more here, right? Because they need to keep it down. They need to keep the selling as they're recycling and rolling over their positions. They want in here. Right? And then cheaper, when it's down here and it's the stock's really cheap, you're, they're going to use the mechanics of people taking quick scalp trades, right? So it goes from 140 to 170. You're going to have people trying to make, you know, rolling that over, and they're going to be slowly accumulating. Whereas up here, they weren't doing as much, right? So now they can do it down here at a higher frequency and get a better um, price aver average, dollar cost average. It it doesn't seem like that's the way they do things, but you know, you look at any stock that's been that comes down at bases for a very long time, but there's a, a lot of volume. They're just relying on people scalping, making you know, buying it for one twenty and then selling it for one fifty and then just doing it over and over. And I do the same thing. I, I'm I'm there too. If they want to pay me for them trying to get a good dollar cost average while I'm doing the same thing, go right ahead. Why as well play their game. So I won't touch it until it gets down to like 145. So what I think they do have, they have uh, Ash data or presentation. So they'll probably do the presentation, um, maybe a brief spike on the press release. And then what they'll do, so it'll probably come up maybe up to two and then they'll flush it. And then we'll wait down to 146 for potential ad here. Of course it could be, you know, it's around 150, below 150. But that's the next next stop there. Of course, it could just blast up, but who knows? I, even if even if it does, it's not in a rush here. Not in a rush. At this point, most of my speculative that it's just it's either we need the whole you know picking individual ones at a good price is what you're looking for now but you're not looking to say oh um you know we'll buy we'll buy it below the buy threshold and then like three months later we'll sell it at this point you need everybody to start becoming hot again for us to get that gap from a buy threshold to a sell basically unless the company's you know fundamental story is just too overwhelming for the um the market which is in that case you have to go look at names that have been strong since january like they're still up since january so like aveo was one of them a lot of the top ideas so aveo uh Asperian, um what's another one uh adma all those have been strong essentially since yeah the beginning of the year those are the only ones where if it dips below the buy threshold you can maybe i don't want to say rely upon but you would say there's a potential for it to come back and hit the sell target. But everybody else, in the, especially in the bio booms, like you just got to understand that you're a long way before, you know, time-wise probably before we start hear, seeing things going from buys to sells. The market's just not allowing that to happen. And there's a lot of, there's enough people just trying to get a really good price and just basing out and they're scalping it. And which, you know, it's a strategy that maybe we should employ here, but um that's really aggressive and i i like trading aggressively and but unfortunately running it through the marketplace and you know asking questions and putting that strategy out to you guys you have to realize you can't just be checking in on your portfolio like once a week you'd have to be stuck to your screen and be an active trader to really take take advantage of that because of the just the amount of swings and the volatility in the name um and then also the potential for a press release or some sort of catalyst, something that's going to change the narrative. Um, you don't want to just be blindly putting in huge buy and sell orders and just letting them sit there um, 
if you're looking to book profits quickly. Um, anyway. It's just not really, I don't want to say feasible, but to run it through the marketplace, you guys would have to really be on here all the time, constantly communicating, which it's not, that's not the majority of the people that are in the service. So if you guys are on here and you want to talk about it, we can do it, but I'm not going to put it out there for everybody to digest. Anyway, moving on to Bioreactor. See, it's like this just... Man, quality names are just grinding up. Some of the beatdown names are grinding up. And then the ones that have been doing okay are just kind of pulling back. It's just, yeah, it's just... You know, one's going up, another one's going down, one's going down. It's just, Bioreactor's been a really, it's been a mix. But, for our top guys, I mean, Halo, Genmab, Regeneron, ISRG. Some of these names that I really like, Vertex, they've been doing great. Horizon now, back. Vives, that's actually, I got to... Vive, Align, Catalan's been... It's coming up off the bottom. NC, NBIX. Where's NBIX doing? What's, what's she doing? She's been kind of like chopping, right? Yeah. Up, down, up, down, up, down. What happened yesterday? I missed that completely. Oh, man. <laughs> Like, oh no, giant sell off. Nope. <laughs> I mean, they are, you can see this one setting in here. So they've, somebody had this, and now they're, uh, they got a little double top set up. So there's the sell off angle. So this was the move, but this will be an inside day. Maybe it grinds up, but this is, this is the angle of attack. So if you're in MB, MBIX and you haven't booked profits, I know we're still above some sell targets. I would kind of start to look for, you know, we have a double top set up. Now, this is the one of the big killers here, which is when you see the monthly RSI starting to weaken up, you see a lower high, right, on the RSI, daily RSI, and double top set up. You're starting to see, a, you know, angle of attack on the trend start showing up. I mean, today will probably be a low volume day, inside day. That's a big candle anyway, so... Chances are it's going to be inside, but it's not going to probably get above the high. You know, obviously don't sell the whole position or anything like that. That's just, that's just not what you do with a bioreactor name, but you got a bunch of negative things going against it. Um, we're outside the monthly Keltner channel. We were outside the monthly Keltner channel. The daily, you're daily outside the high. I mean, you're, there's a lot of things to say. You should be probably looking the books and profits here. Waters, I think I gotta adjust my prices on Waters. I just want to get in on this guy, but we have we came close to hitting my getting the buy, but then we whiffed. Just I was off there, and I don't know why. I mean, there's a few names I've wanted to get in that I've whiffed on so far, but we've almost hit almost all of them. Thankfully, the timing on in October, that was very good. We hit a lot of ones that we've been waiting on and a whole bunch of new names that we put on there uh, into the portfolios. They were like, when when I was looking at them and I was finding them and I was doing the calculations, I'm like, these guys are buys like right now. And I, you know, it's hard to get as many as I, we want out, but the, we have diversified portfolios right now, even though they are healthcare. Like almost every industry is is in there. It's nice. I feel really good about the portfolios and what we have. And I'm still willing to add um, additional names to the to the portfolio, just simply because if you have the cash and you believe in healthcare, there's a lot of opportunity right now. I mean, the amount of companies still trading and negative enterprise value is insane. 
and they're not even like super speculative with a huge cash position and they're like a decade away from being profitable we're talking like if not close to being they are profitable or they're incredibly um they have incredible upside potential um, even if they were to miss on a couple of their programs, one program could easily drive their value, uh, their revenues to quickly um, to justify their current and future uh, projected sales. It's great. A lot of companies like that. Anyway, I'll stop blabbering. Let's move on. We're at 908. I got to get moving here. Give this a chance so you guys can see it at least maybe before, if not around the opening bell. Still seeing a pullback here. I'm not surprised on that. Again, these guys were trading so cheap. You're going to see a pullback. I'm still good with accumulating these names. I don't need to sell them. These are these are going to be right now. I mean, I'll book profits when it hits our sales, but this is right now on two names that, like, please tell me GSK and Santa Fe are going to be bad t uh, companies in a decade. No. No, they'll be fine, and the share prices will recover. Is GSK gonna like go on a tear from here? Probably not, but you know, SNY, GSK, bunch of I mean, these guys have dividends. If you want to do yield talk and all that, like I bought them, put in a sock drawer. Thank you. It'll pay for itself, and it'll maybe long it might might take a couple decades to really to completely pay itself off, but. That's fine with me if I want to, you know, be laughing later on in life at the fact that, you know, everybody was telling me that GSK is in such big trouble. And so is Santa Fe. Who else was? Oh, yeah. Uh, Pfizer. What's Pfizer doing these days? Let's take a look. Yeah, remember that? Yeah. Oh, it's just it's COVID. The COVID's all done. The, vi the, vi the virus is, you know, the vaccine demand's going to dry up. Oh, yeah, and there's all the other stuff that Pfizer does. <laughs> Come on, people. Oh, man. It's like just one little thing drags to It's like one little thing drags down the whole entire company. Meanwhile, it's like, well, I mean, for Pfizer, the between the vaccines and the um, antiviral therapies, it is a good chunk. But then again, we can talk. The virus isn't going anywhere anyway. So, I mean, they're still going to need those things. Um, they still got the government in their pocket. So, what someone yesterday was asking me, like, oh, you. Why do you just like you can't stand Pfizer so much? Like you're like oh, there's everything sounds so corrupt. Why would you invest in them? It's like at least I'm getting some of my money back. <laughs> you know, like taxpayer money is at least getting back in my pocket in some way. Sounds terrible. Like I'm contributing to the to the issue, but I have no problem getting my own money back. Anyway, I think I'll end it here. Game plan. You might be able to find a couple healthy dividends. I, the watch lists this week are very thin. I'm really not interested in... Until we're getting really close to that green line. Some of these are good buys, but the technical setups are not strong. So it's kind of a wait and see. I'll put the some tickers in the watch list. It might even be some speculative guys, things that are coming up for Nash. That's probably on our radar right now is anything that's doing Nash that might be a possibility to buy something cheap on the sell-off. Because um, I think we're probably going to see like good news brief spike selling algos pile on flush people out there are expecting a huge spike on the news people are just trying to get ahead try to do like some sort of 
you know, catalyst run up, looking to get out, and you know, the sellers, shorts, selling algos, just pile on and flush it right out. I mean, we saw that with Asperian yesterday. Um, we knew going into that, like the the data that was going to come out, quote unquote, the data, the update on the clear outcome studies was simply just going to be like, hey, did we hit the primary endpoint? Are we proceeding forward? That was the company had got like I think they were two quarters ago. I think in Q2 they were talking like, hey, we're going to give you just a brief little update here, but we can't give you everything because you know we have an embargo on you know or basically the rest of the data because we're you know in q1 we're supposed to be doing a presentation and we can't we're not we're you know essentially not supposed to give you all the information because we're supposed to be presenting it there kind of like almost a contract in a way you know so which is fine which is fine with me i'd rather actually see the shakeout and i hate the you know the weak hands thing and but i'd rather see that happen and then give us another shot at possibly adding because now we know if it hits if it's hitting the primary endpoint and again i talked about this in the, yesterday's video we this is a approved drug you know they, they don't ha they haven't had any problems with manufacturing the fda is not coming in and shutting anything down so they know for at least in you know in a very similar indication that patients can take this so far for the long term and not have any issues obviously there's plenty of clinical trial data so if they hit the primary endpoint on a you know expansion uh indication here label expansion although a big one um that should be good enough for approval for the most part and then if the other data comes in next and shows that it's superior to what we have on the market or you know some biomarkers something that uh secondary endpoints that show that it has an advantage in either some way over you know other drugs right now it's cheaper maybe you know all those things will be figured out and we have a potential for sorry you know blockbuster drug so I'd rather get all the people out, maybe get some shorts who want to like pile on and not aware of the fact that in like maybe, you know, a few months here, this thing's going to, you know, we'll see some more data, you know, more impressive data there that indicates that it'll have some possibility, not only being uh, approved, but could be a commercial success. I don't think we're going to see that from Ash. So I'm going to see, I'm going to expect most even positive news from Ash probably to be sold off and I'll pick them up on the far side. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Good luck. Stay healthy.